Greetings. I hope you're enjoying your Christmas vacation. The last time I spoke to you, I promised to tell you another story. This time, it's not about the grumpy old ox. It's about a spider called Nafila. Even if you don't like spiders, I think you're going to enjoy the story. It's called The Spider That Saved Christmas. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. In the days of Herod, the king of Judea, Mary, her husband Joseph, and the baby Jesus fled Bethlehem by night, bound for the land of Egypt. Weary from their journey, they sought refuge in the caverns of the hill country. And as they entered a cave, behold, a great spider trembled at the child's cry. The sound vibrated through her golden web, filling Nephila with wonder. She scampered to the corner of the silk, where a sack of eggs, her future, hung. They were safe, swaddled in the golden strands she had spent hours knitting about them. She peered down at the fascinating strangers below. The woman, cradling the babe in her mantle, reclined beneath Nephila's silken canopy. The man with kind eyes lifted his lantern, staring into the darkness outside the cave. We can't stay here, Mary, he said in a soft voice. Herod's men are coming. For he had been warned in a dream that King Herod sought to destroy the child. Jesus won't be safe until we reach Egypt. Mary nodded gently, kissing the head of her babe. Fear not, Joseph. Nephila dropped on a line of webbing to get a closer look at the child who seemed to glow with his own radiance. Joseph's eyes turned hard when he spotted the dangling visitor above Mary. Be still, there are spiders, he spat out. He slashed at Nephila with his staff. As she recoiled, Joseph ran his staff through the web, ripping two of the main lines. The golden back spider retreated into the shadows and laid her body protectively over her sack of children. Leave it, Joseph, Mary said. They are dangerous. He lifted the lantern, seeking the spider lurking in the dark. As he raised his staff to strike the spider and clear what was left of the webbing, Mary took hold of the rod. All are here for a reason. Let it be. Now at the hum of the woman's voice, Nephila relaxed but dared not leave the shadows. She rubbed her two front legs together, wondering how she would ever repair the shredded web. Rest, Joseph, Mary patted the ground beside her. Joseph lay next to the child and threw his cloak over the three of them. And behold, wails of anguish and the final cries of babies floated through the night. Nephila stiffened at the sound of the wails and the wind. Poor children, Joseph said, the soldiers are close. Dim the light, Mary whispered. I'm sorry we are in this horrible place, he told her, snuffing out the lantern light. We are so exposed. It is where we are meant to be. There is beauty even here. She looked up at Nephila's web, touching Joseph's hand. And love. 
pray for our safety, he said, closing his eyes. Mary lightly moved her lips. Only the faraway shrieks disturbed the cave silence. Nephila moved to the tattered edge of her silk. Taking advantage of the stillness, she began to spin a new web. How would she ever reattach the ripped drape to the faraway wall? It would take hours, days perhaps. A shaft of moonlight suddenly cut into the cave. As Nefila turned toward the light, a warm gust carrying the sweet scent of berries blew over her. It swirled about the cavern and she felt herself rising slightly. The wispy main lines of her web floated up to the ceiling and stretched to the far wall of the cave as if they had never been disturbed. The spider warily walked the length of the silk to the far cave wall, testing the strength of the new lines. Suddenly, the child below cried, sending a vibration through the web. Nephila's egg sac leapt and rippled at the sound. The spider stared down at the child, this Jesus. Never had she felt such a sensation. She instantly understood what she had to do. At the center of her web, she plucked the strings, playing a tune only spiders could hear. From deep within the crevice of the cave, Nephila's older children scuttled forward by the dozens. Each heard its mother's call and followed her to the cave opening. Nephila hung upside down from the cave's mouth and descended on a thick golden line until she reached the floor. She then climbed to the corners of the opening and repeatedly fluttered across the center line, leaving a trail of golden thread behind her. Her framework completed, she plucked on the center strand. At the sound, her children sprang into action, dropping cords of web, weaving their golden silk in a frantic, rhythmic dance. Now, when it was daybreak and the spider's work was done, the cave mouth wore a golden veil of webbing, sealing it completely. Nephila's children returned to the darkness and their personal webs. But not Nephila. Despite the frost dotting the golden curtain, she rested on the outside at the very center of the web. And it came to pass that Nephila felt the approach of three soldiers climbing the hillside. They carried blood slick swords and spoke in loud, crude voices. You two, get up there and inspect the cave, one soldier yelled. Why would a baby boy be in a cave? You have your orders. Inspect every dwelling and kill every boy under two, especially the newborns. That was Herod's command. Go. A pair of soldiers clambered up to the cave. The yelling and clanging of armor awoke Joseph, though Mary and Jesus did not stir. In silence, Joseph fetched his staff and held it high, ready to defend his family. The golden screen blocking the outside world puzzled him. On its thick gauze, he observed the shadows of two huge soldiers, one waving a sword. Joseph tightened his grip on the staff. Outside, the sunlight caused the frosted cobweb to glimmer and sparkle. Nephila wished to return to the shadowy recesses of the cave. She felt so exposed sitting in the daylight. 
for the child had clearly told her to spin a web over the entranceway and remain there. What should we do? One of the soldiers whispered, considering the spider's handiwork. No one entered this cave, or the web would be broken. You are right. The soldier glared at Nafila, whose legs were pulsing. There's no newborn in there, except maybe newborn spiders. That thing looks ready to pounce, the other soldier said shivering for an instant. I hate spiders. Forget it. Let's go. Everything is clear up here, Commander, one of them yelled, and they retreated, running down the hill. Inside the cave, Joseph lowered his staff and fell against the rocky wall, giving thanks for their safety. Nafila watched the soldiers leave, and after a long while, she began to bow on the strings of her web. The light melody awakened Mary. Joseph, from where is that music coming? I hear nothing, he said. Mary marveled at the gossamer gauze and the shadow of Nephila, illuminated by the sun. Isn't it beautiful? Soldiers came as you slept. The spider saved Jesus and us, Joseph said, staring at the web. Yes, all are here for a reason. Mary looked lovingly at her son and nodded off to sleep. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph remained in the cave another day before taking their leave. They pulled back a piece of Nephila's golden curtain to pass from the cave, and the child's hand grazed the web as they hastened to Egypt. And it came to pass that Nephila withdrew to the cave, where she tenderly embraced her egg sac until the last of her spiderlings came forth. Soon after, she repaired the golden curtain at the entryway and spent her days at its center. Basking in the sunlight, she awaited the return of the child with a sweet cry she could never forget. Even today, golden silk orb weavers, the children of Nephila, can be found on their webs in the sun, waiting waiting, and theirs is considered the most precious of all spider silk. Nephila's gift to the Christ child is remembered in the sparkling tinsel that drips from evergreens all over the world at Christmas time. Poles, Ukrainians, and other Eastern Europeans have a tradition of placing spider ornaments at Christmas trees to commemorate the spider that saved Christmas. So, next time you see some twinkling tinsel or a spider ornament lurking in a tree branch, think of Nephila, who, though small and feared, met divinity and reflected his light as only she could. Like each of us, she was there for a reason. Boys and girls, I've enjoyed sharing these stories with you and I look forward to a time, hopefully soon, when I can visit you in your classroom and tell you more. Father Camille and I wish you and all your loved ones a healthy, safe new year. Bye for now.